It all started with a single idea. Then came a chance observation and a monumental discovery that would change everything. It revolutionized medicine and saved millions of lives. This, of course, is the story of penicillin. It was 1928 at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in London. Alexander Fleming, a bacteriologist, had just returned from a vacation. At the time, he was studying Staphylococcus, the microbes that cause staph infections. During World War I, he had served as a captain in the Army Medical Corps. Based on his experience, Fleming aimed to develop more effective treatments for battlefield wounds. In his notoriously messy lab, he returned to a petri dish he had left uncovered and saw that it was contaminated with mold. But this was no ordinary mold, no. It was Penicillium notatum. Fleming realized the mold was producing a powerful bacteria-killing substance. Could this stop life-threatening illnesses like pneumonia or meningitis? He dubbed his accidental discovery mold juice. There was probably some regret there, since he later renamed it penicillin. Despite its promise, Fleming struggled to isolate penicillin in a usable form, and the scientific community hesitated to embrace this potential game changer. Fast forward to 1939, when war once again broke out in Europe, and the need for effective antibiotics was dire. British soldiers were dying from terrible infections. A team of Oxford scientists picked up Fleming's research. They isolated enough penicillin to save four lives. Mouse lives, sure, but still a major medical breakthrough. The next step, ramping up production to save human lives. This was easier said than done. Fleming's penicillium thrived on the surface of a nutrient-rich liquid, but this produced only small amounts. So they got creative, growing the mold in items with greater surface area, like bedpans and bathtubs. When that wasn't enough, they collaborated with local potters to design specialized vessels that increased fermentation. Enter the Penicillin Girls, six technicians who diligently cultivated the treasured penicillin supply. But it still wasn't enough. Florian Heatley traveled to a U.S. government lab in Peoria, Illinois. There, scientists discovered that corn steep liquor, a byproduct of refining corn in the Illinois cornfields, was just the answer they were looking for. Think of it like a supercharged smoothie, packed with nutrients, encouraging the penicillium mold to grow. Local residents and researchers were asked to donate moldy items. Spoiled bread, cheese, cured meats. There was no moldy stone left unturned. Then, in 1943, an unlikely hero appeared. Moldy Mary. Yeah, history can be harsh with nicknames. To this day, her identity is up for debate. It's likely that it was Mary Hunt, a lab technician who cut off a bit of tainted melon for the experiment. Or an anonymous Peoria woman who handed in a rancid cantaloupe. And this mold was a winner! Unlike earlier batches, it flourished in deep vats and yielded lots of penicillin. By 1944, US pharmaceutical firms were mass producing penicillin saving countless lives during the war and laying the foundation for the antibiotic revolution. In 1945, Fleming, Flory, and Chain won the Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine. Since then, penicillin has saved an estimated 500 million lives. In 1953, a curator at the Smithsonian asked Fleming to donate lab materials for an exhibition on antibiotics. He mailed a two-inch commemorative culture he had prepared from the original penicillium mold. To this day, the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History carefully preserves this mighty mold medallion. Penicillin's journey from a moldy petri dish to a life-saving drug illustrates the power of curiosity, collaboration, and a dash of serendipity. Be sure to check out more exciting Smithsonian stories on another episode of National Treasure.